you've had a fantastic year. Yeah, everybody, player, staff, a really top year. You know, you should be proud of what you've done in an England show. What a fabulous goal! 1-0 England! There's his first England goal! Two hat tricks! How sweet is that ball? How do you look back on it and the whole experience? So many different feelings and emotions. It's a goal that cranks the volume up across the nation. Lots of really memorable moments. Okay, what a fabulous goal! We have had to play in some environments over the last few years where there has been some abuse. Sterling! It's not provoking very seemly reactions. Nobody from the outside sees how we are and you know what we're like with each other. Yes! <laughs> Penalty agony in the European Championships. The sport I received from everyone, I felt it from every every part of the world. We have to make sure that we acquit ourselves well to every challenge that's put in front of us. Yeah. <laughs> in a few months now, since the summer. Is there one amazing moment or memory that stands out for you in particular? Sterling! Jordan Henderson! Luke Shaw! Beating Germany is always an enjoyable occasion. It's Kane! England have a two-goal lead! Amazing to be out there, play at Wembley in the England shirt, it's special. So. Big chance for England, Sterling is there again! I think I always remember the game against Denmark in the semis, the connection between everybody in the stadium, really, and the team. You know, it was an incredible moment that, you know, even now, wherever wherever I go, people that, are, that were at that game mention it. Going to Wembley for the final, people lining the streets on the way to Wembley. You do recognise the impact that you're having across the nation. There were incredible, incredible scenes that none of us will forget. I used to got a bed dreaming that England were going to make one major trophy in my lifetime, and, you know, we got that close. So many... Uh amazing memories that will live with us all forever. Yeah. Right. Good. good to see you. Man, camera. How you bro, how are you? Yeah. All right, you all right? You good, you good? How are you, bro? How are you? The f period after the final was difficult for everybody because we didn't really get closure as a group. So I think for the players to get the letters, the feedback, the encouragement, um, the recognition from everybody was really important for them and we were able to bring some great memories and bring people together at a time when they hadn't been able to do that for a long period. So I think that journey we went on really resonated with people and the players needed to be aware of that. Crazy summer, right? Eh? Crazy summer. I've even had Millwall fans come up to me. That's, oh, a, really? sh that's a shock. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I guess there are, there are two differences between an England camp environment and what you might experience at a club. The first is that everybody here is English in terms of the players. That is a different dynamic to, uh, to any uh, changing room really now in, in, in all leagues, I would think. And the other difference is that you live with each other for 10 days to 45 days or whatever it was we, we were together in the summer. They ganged up on us, we created a wall. It's important here that when we come, we get along with each other and that there's, there's good chemistry, not just on the pitch, but off the pitch. And I think that's one thing that you can see with the team. What, what rivalry, eh? Arsenal's not there, you know? It's a good thing, I think, you know, especially for, for England and this setup and the way we want to go in certain tournaments, I think. You know, you've had it in the past where there might have been groups of players not really speaking to each other, but everyone's friends, everyone wants to, you know, be involved with each other in some way and, you know, be friendly with each other. And um, I think that's definitely what got us so far in the Euros. See him doing his air because the camera's there. Your radio. Mm -hmm. Talk sport. 
Yeah, it's going to be difficult. This team can handle that. As long as we kind of keep our heads cool, we can do everything. As a team, unfortunately, we've had to be in some difficult environments for our players. We have had to play in some environments over the last few years where there has been some abuse. Had one or two reports in the last few minutes of racist abuse. Raheem Sterling and others have been abused. Gareth Southgate has dealt diplomatically but correctly with the situation. People say it shouldn't be happening in the 21st century. There's no basis for it in any century. The Hungary game was on a different level. Very hostile, obviously. I think just because of the chance that were going round and the way that we were treating some of our players was um, not acceptable. Definitely there were some isolated uh, incidents for some of our players who were warming up in particular. But I think the players are, have been really focused in those moments. Much better for England, Sterling! They've got the goal! It was definitely a nice moment when Raheem scored. Raheem had gone through a few personal things in his life which, you know, he was just in remembrance that day of, you know, somebody that he knows. But then obviously, you know, as, as he was celebrating there was a lot of things thrown onto the pitch. It's not provoking very seemly reactions from those Hungarian supporters behind the goal. We kind of just created a barrier so that, you know, nothing could hit him while he was, you know, taking that moment to, you know, pay his respects. So there's always a balance for us of making the right statements, um, but also I know that the players want the focus to be on their football. I can remember Jack and Deck, you know, after he scored the third and fourth goal, there was, you know, they had the cups of beer that the fans have thrown at us and pretending they to drink it, which obviously set them off even more. See, after the summer, the disappointment tonight was a real statement of intent that, you know, we're back and we're ready to push on again. Tell me about that goal. Yeah, look, I'm happy to score. Um, obviously, the keeper made a mistake, but to always score and put one in the back of the net is always good. What a goal! <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's saying it's an OG, but um, I'm taking it. I don't score a lot, and my 25th cap tonight, so to score on that is a, is a real proud moment for me. That night, their performance was a really high level, and they were very proud of the way they played. This is what real sport sounds like, blasting out your radio. The squad itself, the management of the squad itself, seems to be going about their business in a real correct manner. They seem to be so focused on the job in hand every time they take the match. It's fantastic to see. I think, yeah, when you score, you remember the game the most, of course, yeah. Probably the one on my birthday, I think. That was probably the most special one. Lingard finds Saka, and it's four. When I turned 20 and my family and stuff was at the stadium, and my personal highlight is probably me scoring. And a little bit of Wembley redemption for Bakao Saka. 50 days on or so from that penalty. Teenager, Bakao Saka. And it's saved. And Italy are the European champions. Obviously, I was quite down after, and yeah, the support I received from everyone, I felt it from every every part of the world, and yeah, it really lifted me. And I think it was a difference for me to be able to come back into the season with the same happiness and joy, and looking forward to playing football again. Bukayo is a player who has impressed us with his maturity. The fact that he had a sad end to what was an incredible summer and an incredible tournament for him. Um, he responded brilliantly and um, it was great for us to get him back in an England shirt as quickly as possible. And his consistency is outstanding. My own size, you know what I mean? I'm a bit smaller than everyone else. There we go, mate. There we go. Thank you very much.
My role is different on camp. I'm a coach. I'm an assistant to the manager. Um, off camp, I'm a scout, really. Spend a lot of time watching matches. Well, I met Steve for the first time I visited Chelsea when Andre Villas-Boas was the manager. I liked Steve's ideas on the game and his approach to the coaching sessions. A little bit of finishing, count will count every goal. After four minutes, you'll swap just as a left-sided shot on a right-sided shot. I think getting on the grass every day is something that I particularly enjoy and um, you know, trying to make a difference with the team. He'd won a Champions League final with, uh, with Chelsea. He'd won the league with Chelsea. He'd had a great background in youth development, so tremendous experiences to be able to pass on to the players. I think ultimately uh, the buy-in comes from uh, over a period of time earning a trust because of the messages that you, know, you give are ultimately you know, correct and, and provide success. So our players aren't stupid if what we're preparing them for doesn't happen on a regular basis, then their buy-in will be less. We developed an understanding and a relationship that I think has been a, a huge friendship for me as well as a, a working relationship, somebody who I trust entirely. Poland came within five minutes of ending England's 100% record back in March. And that was without their one genuine world-class operator. I think to, to go away from home and and get results in countries like Poland is very difficult. So I remember um, Harry Kane scoring this crazy goal. That's in the parade. Crazy goal. I think, yeah, I remember that goal vividly. What a fabulous goal! Lewandowski wants it. Sends across towards the far post. Tonight was very disappointing to concede in the last minute, but I felt like over the last three games, you know, the lads have put in a immense shift and, you know, we've had two great results and obviously a good result here. So overall, I'm just happy to be involved and, you know, happy for the lads that we've done so well. We know we're not quite where we want to be yet, but also there are teams who are chasing us who want to bring us down and um, that really should focus the mind and make sure that our mentality is uh, at a very high level for every game we go into. Congratulations first and foremost, it's the five year anniversary today of you taking charge of, of the England side. Um, how would you sum up those five years in Cantu for us? There's lots of, uh, lots of markers that we could use, but for, for me in terms of working with the team and uh, the progress made and the enthusiasm for the team, the connection with the, uh, with the country, I think they're the things that are probably uppermost in my mind. Was that a little one? Ooh! Was that, I would have, no. did he let go of it or what? The group that we have, you know, everyone is, you know, is the same, everyone comes in and wants to win, we want to do well for the country and everyone's good friends, everyone, you know, wants to be around each other and, you know, I think that's one of the main positives about this group. Well, I don't think that 
we ever take anybody's performances for granted in, in, uh, in an England shirt. There's of course competition for places in those areas of the pitch. I knew the goal would come. Keep getting in the areas, the goal will come, bro. Love my bro. You know what? Scoring for your country is it's a dream, man. It's a dream. You know, from the fans chanting your name. I can't even put into words. I think I'll, I'll, I'll deep it when I get back into bed tonight and you know, I'll realise that you know, I've another goal for my country. Wow. We are fortunate to have uh, a group of highly motivated people that have uh, a high level of expertise in their field and all bring something to the you know, to the to the table. Operation get massive. <laughs> you know, it's a, it's that never ending search for perfection, really. It's always a good intensity. The level's always high, and yeah, it's just obviously good to test yourself against the best. And I think you try and take something from everyone's game, because. Obviously, I think everyone has their own, like, unique qualities. For me, it's always looking at the, the attackers and what they do and stuff like that, trying to make myself better as well. They're always enthusiastic on the training pitch. The biggest problem we have really is getting them off the training pitch. Oh yeah. Come on. Yeah. 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 No, yeah. No, way. no way. Oh yeah. Yeah, that is stunning. <laughs> 2-2. Let's be honest about the situation, shall we? England could effectively get the job done tonight. This is a team that are built to use the ball well, and we've got to see that, but they've also got to work their socks off without it. You know, we've got to be the right mentality. It's an important night for us, a chance to, to get really close to qualification, and we've got to take that opportunity with a high boot, it's a penalty. Ronald Shalai, what a moment. And he's taken it, Hungary lead at Wembley. Foden, little flick on and Stones is there to make it 1-1. Qualifying winning run is over. England held by Hungary at Wembley today. Calvin Phillips is behind me and he is England's BT Player of the Year. He doesn't know it yet. Um, fully deserved top boy, top player. And we're going to go over there now and surprise him with this amazing award. So, uh, yeah, let's go over and uh, give him a surprise. Calv? Yeah? Got what? a bit of a surprise for you, mate. What, what are you doing? You are England's BT Player of the Year, geese. What? <laughs> Swear down. Mate, fully deserved. Oh my God. Unbelievable. Mate. You buzzing? Yeah. <laughs> I never expected to win Player of the Year. As I am and who I am, I'm very laid back. But when it comes to obviously playing again for England, I want to do my best for the country and you know, every game, you know, I went out and tried to do that. Well, I think with Calvin, we saw a player a Premier League player playing in the Championship with Leeds. You're never quite sure how a player is going to adapt and react in, the in a change of environment, but he adapted brilliantly. I mean, he's, he's one of my favourite kind of players, which is, I don't mean that from a personal perspective, but I mean, he's, a, he's what I would call a, a high performance, low maintenance player. You know, I'm very appreciative of you know, the fans and you know, everyone that voted for me and also everyone that didn't, so. <laughs> the, the 
focus on England being part of the England group and winning matches for England is, is where we're at. I think that's become an established way of working for the players. Henderson. Yes, in back. Jordan Henderson quips it in. Harry Kane's there! The performance against Albania again made a complicated game look very easy. Just beats the offside track. Let's get going by Kane! The second of the night! fortunate to have you know one of the best finishes in world football as our number nine. Kane! He's now you know within touching distance of the greatest goal scorers in English history and uh, it's a, a fantastic achievement. Number four, number four. The perfect, the perfect one. The perfect one. Yeah, nice game. Good, uh, good night all round. Obviously, great team performance. Nice to get the, the hat trick. Obviously, Harry's a leader. I think, you know, for especially a group like us who, you know, are rel relatively young, um, it's good to have somebody like that. In San Marino, there was never any doubt in our mind that we would win the game. It's Harry Maguire who connects. Will Smith throw. Harry Kane looking for another and getting another. Here is Kane again, looking for a fall. Still, Harry Kane gets the fall. with the first England goal for Arsenal's Emil Smith-Rowe. Tyro Mims with his first England goal. Here's Abraham. There's mine. I think it was important to praise the mentality of the players, clinical, ruthless, to play the entire 90 minutes in the right way, in the right manner, with good habits. England have 10. That's what you want to see from an elite team, and I thought the players took that challenge on. Young players came into the team, came into the group, acquitted themselves really well, grabbed the opportunity, didn't, didn't stand back and um, just try to get through the game. They really grasped the opportunity. Earlier in the week, yeah. did you really think that you'd be holding luck? No, I didn't. I thought... Um... <laughs> Because I was with the 21s. Cheers, brother. Brother. Legend. Congrats on the goal, bro. Congrats on the debut, mate. Thanks, mate. Dreaming of this day for a long time. Congratulations. Thank you very much, man. And my family were here as well, so... Uh, I think I seen tears at, at, when the national anthem was on, so... At the end of the game, it's still important to acknowledge that qualification, although we, in the end, made it look fairly straightforward, hadn't been straightforward. You, you're not necessarily aware at the time of what are the key moments in, the, in that qualification. But when you look back, the, the late goal against Poland at Wembley, who we had, where we had to play in front of no fans because of COVID, was probably a pivotal moment in the group. It means that when we were traveling to Budapest, traveling to Warsaw, the, the group had a totally different complexion and um, if we didn't get that goal maybe the, the way the whole group plays out is totally different. Bigger picture, you've had a fantastic year. Yeah, everybody, player, staff, a really top year. 20 games since we lost in, a, in normal time. So something fantastic to build on some great memories you've gone through a whole world cup qualifying campaign you've gone through a whole european championship in 10th year but really appreciate everybody's efforts and you know you should be proud of what you've done in an england shirt and hopefully you've enjoyed it along the way we know that 
what got us to the final in, in 2021 won't be enough in 2022. So you've got to um, constantly evolve and improve. And I think that's always been our mindset. The challenge is quite obvious and uh, it's not something that we're uh, afraid of. And um, I think there is a belief amongst the group that it's possible. The World Cup has to be number one out of every trophy in football. I think it only comes around every four years and it's almost like sacred. We have a, a good competition um, within, the, within the group. We've got some great experiences now of some really high level matches. You know, it just goes to say, no matter, you know, no matter the disappointment of the Euros, you know, we still want to come out there and you know, work as hard as we possibly can to win, win the World Cup. And, and I'm pretty sure if we keep going the way that we are, we've definitely got a chance. The challenge starts again for us. We have to make sure that we acquit ourselves well to every challenge that's put in front of us.